And I've got to talk about that one moment that changed everything. Now, you've already heard about it, about Norm Borlaw going to the lecture by Evan Stakeman. But maybe what you don't know or haven't heard is that Norm really shouldn't have been there. He had already accepted a job with the U.S. Department of Agriculture to be a forest ranger. And because they had a job and he was going to start getting paid, Jeannie's mom, Margaret, and he got married. They were all set, getting ready to move so he could go and work in the Forest Service when the letter came. And the letter said that there are some problems in the Congress with the USDA appropriation. Some things never change. <clears throat> and Norm was going to have to wait six months for the job. And he told me this story in Oslo on the 100th anniversary of the Nobel Peace Prize. And I had been there and saw Norm standing with all these other laureates. And I said, he, he saved more lives than all the rest of them put together. It was a ride in the car, and I said, tell me about it. How did you get there? And he told me the story about his job. And then he had to de be delayed, and so what is he going to do? Poor Margaret, I guess, had to go back to work to support them. And, and he was just kind of filling time, and he goes to this lecture. And just imagine, we're going through Oslo, and he describes to me how enthralled he became by Stakeman's lecture. And so he said, as Stakeman left the room, everybody's supposed to sit quietly and wait while the professor leaves, he ran out and chased him down the hall and said, I want to do what you do. I want to be in your program. Can I be in? They said, well, you know, come and see me tomorrow. I don't know how he ever told your mom, Jeannie, about this, that he was giving up the job with pay in the middle of the Depression. But he went on. That was, that was the moment that I thought changed everything. But then as I got to know Norm and I heard more and learned more about his life, I found out there were the other moments. You know, Ron, he wasn't really supposed to come to the University of Minnesota. He was signed up to go to Iowa State Teachers College and become a science teacher. And one day, one of his friends from Cresco, it's about, I don't know if I'm pointing south or not, but two miles south, uh, uh, two hours south of here in Cresco, Iowa, was a football player at Minnesota. He said, Norm, you can make the team. Come on up. I'll introduce you to the coach. And on the spur of the moment, he gets in the car and drives up the highway, comes to Minneapolis, meets the coach, and changes his mind. And he's here, he becomes a football player, a wrestler, eventually gets accepted into the Department of Agriculture, and uh, goes on to get his, his degree. Maybe that, maybe that was the moment that changed everything, that conversation with a football player. And I found as he went through uh, his professional career, there were similar moments in Mexico, two decades of trying to do all these shuttle breeding and crossbreeding, and it wasn't really getting there <coughs> until Norin 10 arrived. And how did the Norin 10 seeds get there? Because Douglas MacArthur sent, rounded up as many army members who had agricultural training and said, go out and help Japan rebuild its agriculture and food supply. And some major or lieutenant colonel meets Gonjiro Inazuka up in Iwate province and finds he's got this dwarf wheat and says, can I have some of the seeds? And shares them with others and with Professor Vogel in Washington. Norm hears about it, asks for some. And that one moment changed everything. And Norm would tell me about his two biggest wrestling matches. You know, he's in the Agricultural Hall of Fame. He's also in the NCAA College Wrestling Hall of Fame. But he said the two biggest wrestling matches he ever had were with the Prime Minister of India and the President of Pakistan. <laughs> yeah. To convince both of them to adopt not only the new seeds, but the whole approach to agriculture. And if that had failed, would there have been a green revolution? 
Would it have taken off? Would it, well, all those other things that have happened? Maybe those were the moments that changed everything. And he's going to Africa. You know, after he got the Nobel Peace Prize, he was called up by Ryoichi Sasakawa and said, there's so much hunger in Africa. The Green Revolution's not there. We have to bring it there. I want you to lead the effort. I'll fund it. And Norm told me, well, you know, I told Mr. Sasakawa, now I'm in my 70s. I've really had a full career. I don't know if I can take something on. I'm so sorry. I can't do it. Goodbye. The next day, Sasakawa calls back. Norm answers the phone. And Sasakawa says to him, I checked your biography. I'm 15 years older than you. We start tomorrow. There's no time to waste. He hangs up. Norm says, what could I do? I was in. And he has carried the flag of the Green Revolution that's now brought so many people to, far, to follow him and to make what once seemed impossible into something that looks like and it's going to happen. Maybe that was the moment that changed it.